Hello, I'm Neil Hanlon. I'm going to talk about um, Rocky Linux a little bit and Peridot. So I am one of the co-founders of Rocky Linux, and by that I mean I was in a Slack channel at the right time with the right people. Um, and now I've found myself rebuilding Red Hat Enterprise Linux for fun and profit. Not really. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I work at CIQ on the Enterprise Linux team and kind of engage open source and, and help run our engagements with open source folks, and that includes developing Peridot. Um, so I will promise I get to, um, to what Peridot is soon, but I, I first want to talk about kind of how we got here and why we're building Peridot. So to answer this, we need a little bit of background information. Um, as I said, I, I, as well as a bunch of us, were just in the right place at the right time and found ourselves now to be rebuilding um, Rocky Lin or Red Hat into Rocky Linux. And almost all of us had never really touched Koji before. We'd never, you know, we heard about modularity because we were using it, but didn't really have that much of an idea of how module builds just, or MBS worked and how to invoke those builds, how to compose Fedora releases, how to compose Red Hat releases, all of these sorts of things. Um, we had no idea about. So along with a lot of help from people like Pablo Greco and the Fedora SOPs, for sure, um, those pages are, are wealths of information, um, we figured out how to build 8. Um, and we built Rocky 8 with Koji and MBS and all of the Fedora toolchain stuff. Uh, it took us a, a good amount of time, but we, we figured it out in the end. And uh, to ease some of the pain of the domain-specific knowledge that's required to run some of these tools, um, in particular with MBS and, and launching these builds, we developed a thing called DistroBuild. Um, and this was to help ease the pain of distributing that wealth of knowledge for all of these different tools into a centralized place that would allow any of our developers to import and build and patch any of those tools as we, or any of the packages as we needed it. So this is uh, DistroBuild. It's kind of our first step towards automating our Fedora tooling in our um, specific ways because we are essentially taking packages that have been built most of the time, almost 100% of the time, um, and patching them so that they build for us. And most of the time, they just build for us because they're just packages that build. Um, we do need to do some debranding of packages so that they don't say Red Hat Enterprise Linux and we don't infringe on trademarks. And there are some other patches that we do occasionally or have to do occasionally to get patches to build or get packages to build, rather. That's much less so now than it was when we first started building Rocky, but it's still something we have to do occasionally. So DistroBuild is a, a portal that we can go and log into. We can launch imports, we can build packages, and this just triggers remote API calls to Koji, to MBS, which and then invokes calls to Koji. Um, but this is really how we're building 8 today and, and how we, we managed to build not only 8, but also a look-ahead version of 8 um, that tracks essentially CentOS Stream. So we're rebuilding all the packages in CentOS Stream as they come in as well, and we're able to um, automate that with, with DistroBuild. Um, it works really well, and obviously we're using it today to build 8, but there were some limitations in it with how we were invoking those builds, and it was kind of just like a patchwork of, of code that we were putting all together to get these things to work. And we essentially decided that there were about two ways that we could go about it. We could either like fork and start doing something different, and essentially that's what we did, um, or we could contribute back upstream, and that's not something that we're not doing. <laughs> Let me be clear about that, but uh, we, we, we wanted a system that we had better control over, essentially. Um, I talked a little bit about importing and patching, and I wanted to go into that a little bit because this is something that was supported in DistroBuild as well as the future with Peridot. This is a tool called, or we, we wrote a tool called, called SRPM proc to help automate and standardize the patching procedure for all of the packages. So what SRPM proc does, and this is an example for uh, Python 3 right now, um, this adds a patch file from Git into the SRPM modifies the patch to add that to the prep section, makes changes the release field there, and also adds an entry to the change log. Um, and so what with that configuration, 
when we run SRPM proc against the Python 3 package, for example, what it does is it fetches all of the sources from git.centos.org or, or GitLab for CentOS 9 stream. Uh, it downloads the appropriate sources from the appropriate look aside caches and uploads them to the Rocky Linux look aside. And finally, it fetches that patch repo there, applies any of the patches, and applies, uh, builds the SRPM into a disk git format and then pushes that back and tags the results back into our Git. From there, we can then use those built results or built imports to launch builds on any architectures that we want to. And that's exactly what Paradigm does. So we're using the same kind of format here with SRPM proc, but with a, a different build system that helps us automate the whole process a little bit more. So Kind of to wrap up the whys, we, we really wanted to better understand and control how the build system worked, especially with integration into a lot of the systems that we chose to use. So we're using like Mattermost for our chat. We really wanted to have the ability to uh, integrate into their playbooks there for our release procedures and, and use the tooling that they have around um, transparency and communication within a release process. Um, we wanted it to be easier to set up and run at home. Koji and, and um, and MBS are not the most friendly things to run at home, and not that anyone should probably be running those at home, but um, we, we wanted a solution that would enable a sysadmin to run this not only on their laptops, but at work, and be able to produce packages for their, their works in a, um, a convenient and repeatable manner. Um, NFS was a, a big pain point for us running in the cloud almost exclusively and needing to distribute builds across multiple clouds. Uh, Koji has some remote met um, methodology as well to, to fetch artifacts, but it's a lot easier if you just have everything on a single NFS share. Um, so the, the new system that we had, we decided we didn't want it to rely on any sort of network file storage. Um, lastly, we wanted to add some other things that we were particularly concerned about in uh, terms of role-based access control for, for builds, build profiles for different packages so that we can schedule them on the properly sized builders, um, as well as you know, software life cycles, um, security architecture type stuff. Um, so Peridot is our attempt to make rebuilding Red Hat Enterprise Linux something that anyone can do um, to our goals of outlasting the people in the Rocky project. So um, with that said, we're gonna talk about Peridot. It is, in a full buzzword sentence, a cloud native build system that you can run on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, we use temporal.io for deterministic workflows and being able to schedule all of the uh, import, build, um, create repo jobs, all of the different uh, sections of the, the modular system essentially that we've built um, allow us to schedule those jobs across wherever they need to go, including external Kubernetes clusters that we run for external architectures like S390X and PowerPC. Um, it uses the same build and import workflow as DistroBuild, so it uses SRPM proc to process out those changes from git.centos.org and put them into the git.rockylinux.org. Um, and the build workflow is essentially just a different API call, and, and we have a, a new UI to, to undergo that. So this is showing the build of uh, Thunderbird for Rockylytics 9.1 that just happened recently, and all of these individual subtasks kind of get executed on uh, a single build of, of Rockylytics. There is a UI overhaul underway. Um, these lovely timestamps are not localized at all. So they're just basically from when they started and it makes it um, hard to interpret logs occasionally. So we're, we're looking to add a lot of more details and Koji wet hub like information like logs and being able to have direct links to download RPMs and, and um, those sorts of things. Um, we have the, that exposed in the API and via command line tools, but it's not really in the UI right, right now. Uh, along with that is um, Arata, which is something we've introduced at the beginning of, uh, of Rocky 8 and have just recently, in the past couple of days, added the information in for Rocky 9. Um, we completely rewrote our Arata parser that um, queries Red Hat and queries our um, database of packages and our repositories. So we cut down uh, a time from like 24 plus hours to a matter of minutes to process and, and um, release updates. So um, this is our router information. We include this as an, an open API that anyone can access. And um, we're gonna have some blog posts about using that API in the, in the next couple of months as well. 
Um, and of course, Peridot is still using Fedora tools. Um, we're, we're still using Mock. We use RPM build. We use all the, the standard things you're, you're used to for building the packages themselves. It's just the orchestration of the package builds that are a little bit different. Um, and uh, of course, we also use other tools, like we're still using Pungy um, for composing the, the releases. And we use Image Factory and Oz to, to create our virtual image machines as well, our virtual machine images as well. Uh, it, of course, supports dark mode, because why wouldn't it? And um, next, I want to talk about a little bit of what it looks like to use. In comparison to DistroBuild, Peridot is, has a declarative syntax that allows us to set up the projects in, in any form. So the first thing you need to do when you're setting up a Peridot project is configure all of the packages that are inside that project and what repositories they go into. Um, we have a script that parses the upstream data uh, for what packages need to be in certain repositories, base OS, app stream, et cetera. And we write a catalog file that looks similar to this with the package names, the repositories, all the N NRAs, I guess, no, just, yeah, just name and architectures um, that are, or that, that should be in those repositories. And we can add some additional um, metadata as well. But essentially, everything in the project gets configured here. Um, packages can be different types depending on what exactly they are. So a normal source package would be kind of just a dist git package um, that is looking for, it's not trying to do an import from an upstream. So it's just treating it as an original package as if it were just stored in git, which it is. That's uh, compared to or, or in difference to a, um, fork type package, a normal fork type package, which would instruct Peridot to go and automatically do that import from git.centos.org or wherever it needs to be and, and store it in our git. Um, so we have this outer catalog, as I was saying, that generates all of our package names, and those will be all of the, the rel packages. We have our own packages that we introduce for overrides, like the Rocky release packages, Rocky repos. Um, and we also have uh, other packages that may be in extras or uh, alternatives SIG repos. Um, the other thing we do or th th this process enables us to do is determine what packages don't belong in any repos and take those packages and then put them into a single repo. Um, so you may be familiar with CentOS's old adage of no package left behind. Um, that's what we're attempting to do here with, um, with the Rocky stuff is put all of the non packaged or non repository packages into, into a repository so they can be accessed. Um, the other thing you can do is configure essentially any aspect of the, the project. Um, in here, we're modifying or overriding the SRPM root packages that will be executed in the stage that we're building the SRPM. So this just overrides a set of packages to be installed there. And we also have the ability to um, store package dependencies or relationships in our database, which allows us to um, implement essentially software collections. So that's that's what this does for Rocky 9 is an implementation of the GCC toolset 12 software collection simply by adding a dependency on these package globs to these different package names. Um, the neat thing about this is that we, all these catalogs are synchronized and we can snapshot to them. So then we can compare what's different between the snapshots, roll back to them, et cetera. Um, the other thing that that does that I didn't mention um, is we can enable and disable modules. Um, there's a lot of interfaces that we can also add into there that we haven't yet because, again, UI and, and, and coding stuff is, is immensely challenging to get done in a, a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> so uh, how, are, how is Rocky using it? Um, besides R Rocky 9, um, there are several ongoing efforts from our contributors. Um, there's a cloud SIG that is currently delivering optimizations and tools for mostly Google Cloud right now. Um, there are some GVNIC drivers that are in the mainline Linux kernel that haven't yet been backported down into um, RHEL or haven't been released yet. I think I was tracking them, and they have been backported. Um, and so this is a... a kernel build on top of those GVNIC drivers that enables better performance on Google's um, GCP's performance or 
pro network, whatever they're calling it these days. Um, additionally, we, we have an OS tree SIG that's similar to the CentOS stream OS tree stuff that I was watching this morning. Um, and uh, that that's something we're hoping to get to uh, uh, releasing out of Peridot as well as essentially a native build type uh, after our releases happen, just releasing an OS tree compose as well. Um, and just quickly, we have an optimized SIG that's trying to test out different various or test out various micro architecture optimizations like targeting x86 v3 on Rocky um, or, or um, yeah. And then we also have an AltArch SIG that, that builds our Raspberry Pi packages, kernel, um, and we're looking to also add AltArches in for that as well. So um, there, there's some interest in ARM, v, ARM 7 VL or 32-bit ARM for Raspberry Pis, and um, that is something that we are actively working in Herodot to support. We just have to modify the build methodology a little bit because it's not super easy to launch 32-bit containers on ARM. <laughs> uh, so... Contributing back, these Peridot is a method or what Peridot has enabled us to do above and beyond building the packages and releasing Red Hat or Rocky or Linux as a downstream rebuild is hopefully contribute back to that ecosystem. As I mentioned earlier, we found a lot of bugs when we were first rebuilding Rocky, but they were not very high quality bugs. They were bugs that had already been fixed and we were encountering them because we were trying to build Perl from 2019 in 2021 and it had some expired certs or, or any sort of uh, class of problems that weren't very useful um, to report upstream. We're now getting to a point where the bugs we're encountering while building, if they're not unique to us, we are able to reliably report them without having to spend a whole lot of effort determining if they're, they've already been patched, where they've been patched, figuring out where we're wrong. Um, in addition, we are building this look ahead variant of Rocky, which is functionally, uh, you know, it can be thought of as a, a stream kind of version of Rocky. And that will allow us to build packages as they come in from CentOS stream and not only test them and do validation on them, which will improve the overall ecosystem, but also help Rocky release faster by already having those packages built. How can I use it? Um, I know at many jobs I've had, I've had to rebuild RPMs for God knows what purpose, um, a patch that someone wanted, a bug that someone relied on. Uh, who really knows? I that was a serious pain point for me in the past and something my personal intentions for, for Peridot is to make that easier for any sysadmin to maintain and manage those in a more repeatable way. Um, Peridot and SRPM proc make it a, a lot simpler to not have to rebase your patches all the time. Um, we also have another tool called Sideline that helps to backport patches from various trees and, and apply them on top. Um, you can also use it to manage your custom dependencies for your project. Uh, it is essentially, it can be thought of as a, is a, a Fedora copper in a way um, with a lot less user interface to manage everything. But um, it, it is a, for an enterprise to set up and deploy, and especially if you're trying to run this across multiple sites, for example, running it in Kubernetes and having those repositories distributed across all of your sites using, um, you know, we use S3 right now for Amazon, but you could use any backing store that supports an, an S3 um, API. So you can you use those features as well for a lot of different um, reliability concerns and, and scaling these because Peridot also serves repositories directly out of it. So you don't have to sync them or do anything out of there. It maintains those state and, and deploys those um, or serves up those repositories on demand. Uh, we also have API integration so that this can be launched from CI. Um, I'm using that today to update and build packages as um, changes come in. So on merge or, or whatever, we can execute the commands to go and import those packages, build the packages, um, et, et cetera. And then quickly, I want to touch on uh, what's next for Peridot. So 
the onboarding for Peridot and getting it set up on your system is bad right now. Um, it runs in Kubernetes, which means it is a, a pain. And while our initial intentions, and we have some branches that are, are single command setups, it's a, it's a lot of services to set up all at once. And um, we've been doing a lot of thinking in the past month and a half, two months on how we can improve that user experience to make it so that anyone can download it and install it on a Kubernetes cluster that they have hopefully set up, um, but without a whole lot of uh, caveats about exactly what you need to have. You don't need it to be Docker desktop running on Mac, on ARM, and, and all these sorts of other things. Um, so really making that development environment a little bit more generic for users. Um, in addition, for builders like 32-bit uh, ARM and for um, just general scalability purposes, we're going to be adding support for non-Kubernetes builders. Right now, everything gets launched in a Kubernetes pod, which works really well for scheduling purposes, but it also kind of sucks because uh, you're limited to the, the scheduling of those Kubernetes pods and also... Um, we've encountered a lot of weird bugs with running these builds in uh, containers in particular or Kubernetes pods in particular that we don't see when running locally. So um, that's another reason for, for this. Um, Arata administration portal for managing updates, that's actually should be released almost now. Um, we'll have the ability to tie any missing updates or potentially um, invalid updates and as well as report those to upstream. Um, but this tool is helping us catch those and release those back into the, to the Rocky Linux. Um, Rata information interface. Uh, most of this is really just around improving the management interface. Um, so we want to add a better interface to manage the NVR, any of VRAs in a repository um, and integrate our Compose toolkit that we have called Empanadas directly into Peridot so that it can launch the Composes rather than, be, than being run uh, independently of the system itself. Um, lastly, Kind of chat ops and webhooks, those are going to be immensely important for us as we look to fully automate our build process um, by gathering in the MQTT results or feed from Fedora and, and CentOS and using those to automate the imports and builds. Um, so as far as the 2023 roadmap for, for Peridot, you can see a lot more build automation and decreasing the time between import, build, and release for, for Rocky. Any questions? Yes. So, so it seems that you um, basically rewrite, rewrote Koji, well, but everything embedded into one. So Peridot, like there is no MBS equivalent in Peridot. Peridot understand modularity and, and parse module MD directly just to submit and initialize build root differently? Sorry, could you repeat that? So uh, I guess that Peridot understand what a module is, and so is driving a build root completely from the module MD file uh, to initialize the build root differently, to not rely on something like MBS, which then does everything in Koji, right? Right, so per Peridot, instead of calling external APIs, is launching those builds directly. So we have native module builds. It just, uh, it's a different type of package. So in the package config for it, we configure it to be of a module type. And that instructs Peridot to build it as a module. So instead of having an external service that we rely on to uh, coordinate those builds, it's built directly into Peridot. <laughs> Hey, do, do you see Peridot as something that could eventually replace Koji upstream too in Fedora? I don't think so. Um, and there's been a lot of like, oh, it should, everyone should use it. it the upstream should use it. The reality is that is that uh, Fedora's infrastructure and tooling and everything else is completely wrapped around Koji and that's not a bad thing. Um, it works really, really well. And everyone knows, or the, the those who need to know, know exactly how it works. And in that environment, I think it works really well. Um, I think it could be useful for 
some projects or some pieces, but no, I don't, I don't think, I don't see it being re replacing Koji for, for Fedora. <laughs> Is there anything package maintainers in Fedora, CentOS, or Red Hat Enterprise Linux can do to make your life easier? Or, <laughs> or harder? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanted to make it harder, you, uh, they could hide all the sources. But I, I don't see that happening. In terms of making it easier, I think that uh, I think there's a good relationship between um, the enterprise Linux communities at this point, and we're collaborating in, in a good way. I know I've been reporting bugs upstream and, and fixing stuff. Um, we've been having good conversations, I think, about the next steps with like Apple and, and, and those sorts of things. So um, I'm actually really happy that we're, Rocky is now at a point where we're able to contribute back. And I think that's going to help foster a lot of the, um, the interactions there. It is great. Thank you. Any more? Yep. I have one Rocky Linux related question. Are there plans to build Rocky version of CentOS SIG repos, like cloud OpenStack storage? So we we are distributing those uh, release packages in our, um, I think they're in the extras repo. So if you enable extras on Rocky, you have access to the CentOS release for all for the, the, the special interest groups. Um, I use those in OpenStack Ansible, or they're used rather in OpenStack Ansible um, for deploying a lot of those components. Hi. Um, so you showed the tool SRPM proc that you basically use to um, help uh, with the downstream patches of Rocky if I got it right. Mm -hmm. So that got my attention because I, I was thinking, um, is that tool used for other downstream uh, patches that you know? So are other distributions using that tool? Because I see it very convenient. I did could be convenient for many, many distributions. Yeah, so there, there are a couple of distributions that we know of that have like forked it and started doing some stuff with it. Um, they're essentially just, again, downstream of Red Hat, but yeah, they are they are using SRPM proc, and uh, I think one of them is actually using distribuild as well um, to, to build. If I continue from that point, how do you compare with uh, with stuff like Yocto? Because that like that feature is a base there to be able to pull resources, pull sources, put your own patches and build. Sure, um, I, I will admit I'm not a, an expert on Yocto, but um, I, the specification that we've developed here, we've just kind of just thrown a name at called open patch. Um, and it allows us to do more than just these functions as well. We can do search and replace, um, swap from look aside and continually we're adding to that as well to increase the feature set for it. So one of the things I would like to do is add in support for essentially the sideline tool that we have, which backports changes from um, the Linux kernel on top of the Red Hat kernel um, for the GVNIC driver. So we're searching for specific symbols and, and pulling those back down. I'd like to, to I'd like to integrate it into that as well, for example, so that we can automate those the, the um, backporting of some of those patches for the cloud SIG. Any more questions? Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.